They're calling it the Daredevil. 165 horsepower of screaming inline four power, boasting a lighter weight than all the competition and sporting enough tech to give Elon Musk a headache. Athletic, sleek, well-proportioned, the 2021 S1000R looks well up for a shakedown. But is it enough to take on the competition, including bikes like Kawasaki's lightning fast ZH2 and KTM's very own headbanger? In fact, I feel another super naked battle coming on the Knox channel in 2021. The Daredevil versus The Beast. But before that can happen, the pre-battle discussion, and in our case, a quick look at the spec sheet will have to suffice for now. The S1000R has a new S1000RR derived engine that retains the 165 horsepower the old model had, and the torque is more or less the same at 84 foot-pounds. The new engine is now Euro 5 compliant, and overall the bike's weight has been dropped by 6.5 kilos to 199 kilos wet with an extra reduction of 4.8 kilos available should you want to go for the M package with the carbon wheels. According to BMW, this is around 15 kilos lighter than any of the direct competitors. There are some revised gear ratios in 4th, 5th and 6th gears that are longer and designed to reduce noise and fuel consumption. Now I've ridden the S1000R a few times as my good friend has one and I can confirm it's a fantastic engine, loads of power and grunt everywhere in the rev range and it really didn't leave me wanting for any more. Of course, after the S1000RR and 1250GS, many people will have been hoping for the shift cam technology and may be disappointed not to see it on the S1000R, but let's just shed a little bit of light on that subject. At last year's EICMA launch, we had a long conversation with Max Renko, the chief engineer on the S1000R, who was also responsible for the S1000XR. And he did allude to us that any following S1000R wouldn't have shift cam. The reason? Well, the S1000R is a roadster. It isn't about changing up into second gear at 90 miles an hour like a sport bike does on track, and real world road going revs are much lower. In fact, Max was really confident that they could get phenomenal performance for an S1000R motor without shift cam. I think we have to just remember the engines that shift cam is used on. On the S1000RR, it's used to make a high revving inline 4 motor much more torquey in the low RPMs. And then in the 1250 Boxer Twin, it's designed to improve the power right through the rev range up to the higher RPMs. As the S1000R is designed to rev much lower than the S1000RR, they can tune the motor for lower end torque and peak power at a lower RPM, which is obviously much more suitable for real world road riding. Finishing the engine package is an anti-hopping clutch. And just for the record, I can confirm that an anti-hopping clutch is a slipper clutch, if you are wondering. Then we have a revised chassis, and viewers who are accustomed to the S1000RR will straight away notice the trellis subframe that has been carried over. This new chassis is lighter, it's narrower, and provides a greater degree of flex than before, bringing the engine in to a larger degree to support the whole structure of the bike. Connecting the S1000R to the tarmac is the Dunlop Sportsmart Mark III. This is really good news as those tyres are absolutely brilliant and they're the ones that I've been running on my own bike this year. After plenty of road riding in the dry, wet and cold, and I've done two track days too, I can confirm that they are a great match for the performance on tap. For 2021, the S1000R brings the latest technology to the fight and now features a six axis IMU. In summary, we can assume that all parts of the electronic rider interference such as ABS, traction control, wheelie control and so on is going to be much more accurate and will flatter the rider much better than the previous version. Riders wanting the best from their S1000R should definitely opt for the riding mode pro option, which allows you to get the most out of the hardware on the bike. MSR or engine drag control has now been included for the first time and I think that's going to be a really nice feature, combining with the slipper clutch to allow you to modulate the way you want the engine braking to behave, allowing you to slide the rear a little bit into the corner should you want to, or dial it back perfectly to your taste. On Rider Mode Pro, there's also a new function called Power Wheelie, 
allowing you to modulate how much interference you have on wheelie control. This again should be a lot of fun, allowing a longer controlled wheelie with good safety and without the need to turn the traction control off. At least if you do get stopped by the police, you'll be able to hand on heart tell them that it was perfectly safe because you had the power wheelie function turned on. Consistent with the stunt riding theme of the launch video, the traction control can be turned off via a simple switch on the left hand switch gear. This will be really cool as it can be a right pain on other super nakeds, having to trawl through menu options every time you turn the bike off to get the traction control disabled. And while I saw plenty of wheelie and burnout action in the launch video, I didn't see any stoppies, which to me was really surprising because they'd brought a world class stunt rider in for the job, leading me to believe that like a lot of the new bikes coming out, you wouldn't be able to turn the ABS off and therefore making stoppies pretty much impossible. After a check with BMW, I can confirm EU law does not allow for ABS to be turned off unless the bike is designed for off-road. However, in the dynamic pro mode, there is a setting to turn the ABS rear wheel off and deactivate rear wheel lift mitigation, allowing for skids and stoppies with the front ABS still activated, which is really cool. Probably more relevant is the fact that modern ABS seems to turn on at the slightest whiff of rear wheel lift, and on track it's quite common to get the rear wheel in the air under hard braking. So it's really good to know that this setting will allow some rear wheel lift and should make track day riding much more enjoyable, allowing deeper braking without the constant ABS chatter through the brake lever. The S1000R now has the BMW TFT included. I've used this on a few models now and in my opinion it's market leading. And although I really like analog and the clocks on the previous model, loads of riders out there love a good TFT and this one is the best out there. Completing the bike as a revised design package, I personally think it looks great, particularly in the Hockenheim silver colour and you can see the styling cues from both the S1000RR and the F900R in the front. So on paper at least, BMW do run the risk of underwhelming prospective buyers, with other super nakeds like the ZH2, Super Duke R, Chuono and Street Fighter V4 all producing much more power. In a top trump of super nakeds, the new BMW S1000R is unlikely to be your card of choice. However, there are a few reasons why this S1000R might still be enough to outperform the competition. Firstly, on any super naked bike, it's not necessarily the power output that's important, it's how you put that power down onto the road. When we did the ZH2 versus Super Duke R super naked test this year, power definitely wasn't the issue but getting that power down was. Full throttle on those bikes not only has the front wheel in the air, traction control lights flashing left, right and centre, and handlebars slapping around all over the place, it's actually pretty scary. In fact, my own GSX-R750 does the 0 to 140 miles an hour in a very similar time to both of the aforementioned Super Nakeds, even though it's a good 50 horsepower down in comparison. This goes to show that a bike with a planted front end and a bit of aerodynamics goes a long way in the acceleration game, and it's not all about outright power. And secondly, while horsepower seems to be more of an attention grabbing spec than weight, it is no doubt a massive contributor to performance. If the S1000R is 15 kilos lighter than its competitors, this should make a big difference. Not only in outright performance, but in handling, flickability, and just the sheer management of a big 1000cc motorcycle. With both of those considerations in mind, I'm expecting the S1000R to be every bit as fast as the other super nakeds out there. Although I still think the ZH2 in gear performance is likely to be anything this side of a Eurofighter. Finally, the other trick that the S1000R has up its sleeve is its price. Starting at just over £12,000, it represents a significant saving over some of the other bikes out there. However, before you get too carried away, once you start adding a couple of packages like Dynamic and Comfort Package and the Endurance Chain, we're more looking around the £14,300 mark. Even at this price, the S1000R represents really good value with electronic suspension, a full suite of rider aids and that BMW quality. If you want to go whole hog with a fully loaded M Sport pack with carbon wheels, dynamic and comfort pack, 
we're getting up to around £18,800. In summary, and all things considered, I think the S1000R is shaping up to be a real contender. It has a brilliant spec and could surprise a lot of people out there, and I personally can't wait to swing a leg over one.